This morning, Republicans disagree with each other on it. Should a Muslim hold a local leadership position in the GOP? First, I need to tell we you did not expect what Chris Kroc had to say. Vindication for Lupe Valdez. Her old office apologizes after finding her missing pistol. We plan to ask Valdez, though, whether she will really debate Abbott. With all the movement at Dallas City Hall, we'll talk to a fixture there, Jennifer Staubach Gates, taking our questions about how the city is spending your money in the budget, police response times, and her own future. And one year after Hurricane Harvey, has the government's response helped or hurt incumbents like Greg Abbott and Ted Cruz? Inside Texas Politics with Jason Whiteley starts now. Good morning. We begin with one of the most critical times every year at Dallas City Hall when the council is trying to decide how to spend your money and whether to give any of it back to you. In studio, making her first appearance with us on this program, Councilwoman Jennifer Staubach Gates. And joining the questioning, as always, is Bud Kennedy of the Star Telegram. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me. The last time I interviewed you was during the uh. Ebola crisis, but I see you down there at City Hall all the time. Yes. Uh, let's start with what's going on at City Hall right now the budget talks. Um, you support the mayor and the city manager's budget, raising the starting salary for. Uh, officers, but not increasing manpower. And some critics have said that you're lowballing DPD and public safety. What's your response to that? I absolutely support the, the city manager's budget, which reduces the tax rate just by a penny and a half. But that's still a increase because we have values that have gone up 10%. So it's still an increase for the average homeowner $128. There's discussions about going ahead and pushing that rate up a little higher and getting another $28. I am, uh, I want, we need to address retention and recruitment for DPD. Um, and I think if we're going to do that, and I think if the, I think the will of the council is there to do that, we need to find other places to cut because we cannot encumber our future budgets. Where, where else do you cut then? Well, our own city council offices have off, is expanded. There's like asking for 14 more people. We don't need that. We need to be able to cut our own budgets. Um, and then there's also some other initiatives. There's an innovation officer and there's, there's other new encumbering issues embedded in this budget that I think if we're gonna say, look, why put them in there now if we're not gonna be able to sustain them? Well, well, and if we're gonna, if we're gonna prioritize the uh, police and fire, then let's go ahead and do that now and find the ways to cut. I mean, the DPA is asking for a 5% raise on top of their current contract this year, which is the current contract is 25 million more to the budget than last year, plus another 6 million in pension. Um, they're asking for another 5%, which is another 21 million. Uh, you brought up retention. I wanna ask you about that quickly as well too. The, the department remains down, the city remains down, 800 officers. Does Dallas need to hire those officers back we if so, how and when does that happen? We put in, in this budget that we're going to try to hire another 250 officers. And that's just going to be a little bit over what we're anticipating attrition. Um, so we're, we're, I mean, it's, it's a break even still. Right. I, what Chief Hall and um, TC Broadnecks, our city manager, have said is they don't think they can hire more than that. So we could budget for it, but the reality of being able to fill those spots. If towards the end of the year we were able to fill more than that, we would go out there and they've, they've assured us we try to find, we would find the money and be able to continue um, hiring officers. Jennifer, the, the city manager has made a big deal that this is a balanced budget that he's yes. presenting. You know, but it looks like from the outside, it looks like a low ball budget that, that some council members can swoop in and say, oh no, we want to raise more and help our fire and police. How much of this is politics? Oh, it's, it's full of <laughs> politics. <laughs> you know, the 15 of us that sit down there, I will all admit we're all politicians. But we have to be able to say, I, we have to be able to have a sustainable growth. The, the budget that he has um, presented to us is a 6% budget over last year's budget. Who at home keeps budgeting 6 7%? And now they're saying, well, let's go ahead and go to 7%. That's not sustainable. We cannot keep up that rate. And so we're going to have to look at ways that we're not going to have to encumber future future budgets that are going to end up being deficits. And the, the other side would say Dallas is growing at 10% a year in, in right. the values. Why not uh, raise the budget? 
because people can't afford that kind of growth that they're in their tax base. Yeah. They cannot afford to keep spending. We're not seeing salaries going up 10%, but their taxes are going up at that rate. So we've, we've got to have restraint and we've got to say, look, if we're going to pay, if we're going to decide to put additional funds beyond the, the current year of meet and confer, then lo, let's cut the budget. And that's, that's what I'm working on. I'm looking at ways. Um, I already presented $5 million in government performance and financial management. My, the committee I chair last week to with five million dollars in cuts and you know everybody just there's a lot of needs and wants and, and I don't disagree we have a lot of needs the, the office of innovation something you mentioned a moment a moment ago that that would be a, a new city office right down at City Hall do you support that it sounds like you you said well, it, it I, have could go. Some, I think I have some challenges I think it could maybe bring us some new ideas um, but but it depends on who that person is that we hire. It's one, we're looking at hiring one executive and potentially two others. I just don't know in the market if that's going to be able to really make that, really be able to find the savings throughout the city. And if, and if we want to be, we want to say our priority is public safety, then we need to put our money there because it's, it's not endless amounts of money out there. You're, you're leading the search for the next city auditor as well. Yes. The last city auditor that, that this city had did not offer critical looks at city departments, allowing waste at City Hall. What must the next city auditor have? And who do you think that person might be? Because there's already an interim down there now. Well, we have put Carol Smith as our interim. And you know, Craig, there was a lot of things Craig did bring to light. And so that role as a city auditor is, is extremely important. Um, we're going to need to have somebody that's independent from management and that's someone that's going to be able to really do a good analysis of where the risks are, where where's money being wasted, and then be able to do audits and, you know, help us identify the high risk areas and then make sure those are audited properly. Do you have a favorite yet? Oh, no, no. We are just getting the commission together Still at this early point. On. We haven't even, right. and you know what, this is a really unique, um, we actually are bringing in professionals to help us hire that next city auditor. F final seconds here, Jennifer, too. I've heard that you are and that you are not interested in running for mayor. What's the truth? You know what? I love my job as a council member uh, right now, and I feel like that's where I've got to, you know, do the work and get through this budget. And I feel strongly that I need to be making decisions for the role that I serve now. And I think when politicians start making decisions to be able to create sound bites or uh, campaign slogans, then you know the public is is it's a disservice so to it, the, those that we represent. Is that a no? You're not. That is uh, that is right now. I'm doing what I'm doing, and I plan to run for this seat again. And but I'll continue to evaluate options. And I know you know there will be a mayoral election next May, and by November, December, when people should be thinking about it. I'll make a decision with when I feel like the rest of the field should make their decisions. Sounds good. Jennifer Stahlbeck-Gates from Dallas City Council, thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me.